Good morning. Um, you've heard uh, Dr. Yal and uh, Margaret talk about two different perspectives, uh, how to work with open source and you know, what kind of commercial things you can do with uh, open source. But I actually want you to uh, point, I want to point a slightly different perspective. You actually witnessed two biggest networking vendors come into open source. So that's, I think, uh, you know, who says networking is not transforming, right? Um, what I'm going to walk you through is uh, uh, Verizon's you know, perspective on open source, why uh, we like open source, why we want to work with it. But before going there, uh, kind of give you a little bit of context on where we stand uh, and what is driving some of this. Uh, if you look at uh, our traffic patterns uh, across wireline, wireless, global IP networks, uh, they're going up. I mean, uh, this is a story that you will hear uh, from any carrier, uh, you know, they're going up at 40, 50 percent a year, uh, you know, year over year. And this does not account for what is, you know, awaiting, right? Uh, things like AR, VR, AI, and all. When when those things start uh, becoming mainstream, we expect these to actually accelerate the growth. At the same time, when you look at uh, the industry, industry is, uh, you know, evolving. Uh, we are seeing competition come from different areas. Uh, uh, even on the networking side, now you're hearing a lot about uh, uh, you know high altitude uh, platforms, uh, whether it is SpaceX or not somebody else. Are uh, are you looking at uh, web scale carriers deploying a massive amount of fiber across the globe? So, you know there is different kinds of uh, uh, competition emerging. Uh, number of networks that uh, each carrier is managing is increasing. Uh, not only that we have we still have one X, two G, EVDO, and others, but we are. De, you know, deploying uh, uh, 5G, and uh, we are working on, uh, even on the FIOS side, multiple flavors. So as the variability of the network increases, uh, there, there is a bit of complexity. And finally, the transformation complexity. Uh, you know, this entire forum is about SDN and FE, and carriers, you know, haven't, uh, what do you call, uh, reached the point where uh, this becomes a BAU thing. We are still exploring, figuring out what is the right way. Um, between us and the vendors and the open source uh, bodies and others, there's a lot of work to be done to make this, uh, you know, seamless. Same time, uh, when we look ahead, there is there are uh, new pressures that are going to come across at us, right? The the physical to digital uh, integration. Uh, uh, Sandra talked about it, and others talked about it. So when you live in a world of uh, of augmented reality and autonomous vehicles. Networks can't just, you know, be managed by just varying bandwidth. That's what we've been doing. You know, we were selling minutes of usage, and then we went to, uh, you know, gigabits and, and megabits of bandwidth. We had to start looking at other levers uh, to deliver those experiences. Uh, latency is definitely one of them. Uh, massive amount of connectivity. So networks will have to be, uh, you know, developed to start providing those sort of experiences uh, in slices, and that increases the amount of complexity that, uh, you know, within the, within the network uh, uh, systems. The other point I want to point out is uh, if you look at traffic um, between wireline and wireless, 80% of the IP traffic that goes on the carrier networks, and I'm, I'm going to talk a bit about US here, comes from five uh, publishers. Um, it might differ, for example, on uh, wireline. Uh, we'll see uh, Netflix being one of the, the biggest uh, driver of the traffic. If you go onto the wireless, it's uh, uh, YouTube. But effectively, 80% of the traffic is going to five publishers. What, what does this mean? What this means is we're no longer a north-south uh, traffic management uh, you know, uh, company or organizations. Uh, we are also dealing with a lot of uh, east-west traffic management because we have peering partnerships with, with these uh, companies. Most of the traffic is you know, uh, finding the, the uh, quickest way to exit our networks and enter these publishers' networks. So um, it's a different paradigm, a different way of building networks than, than the way we've been, uh, we were building networks in the past. The, the third point that, uh, you know, that we look at is that we've built networks to have this monolithic centralized control. But the use cases that are going to emerge down the road will require uh, networks to be you know, ad hoc, dynamic. You, know, you may want to create networks at the edge and, and uh, terminate them at, a, at an instant's uh, you know, notice. You'll require a very different kind of control system to manage uh, this dispersed uh, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, ecosystem. And that is, that is again, driving uh, networks to look at, uh, um, look at you know, what sort of future uh, paradigms we could adopt to. And finally, there was, a, uh, there was a lot of talk about distributed clouds. This is what is going to be the future of uh, networks. It's virtualized, uh, and we are able to run any application anywhere in the network, uh, all the way to the light pole having a compute and storage running any kind of packet core application, or any application you call it, to the, the centralized uh, uh, data, uh, you know, data warehouses, data centers. And networks are, uh, I mean, software-driven. They are uh, adopting uh, what IT teams had gone through, DevOps and uh, cloud and, and whatever else. But this also kind of illustrates the point I was making before, is that uh, it's about moving the traffic east-west. It's, it's, we're going to operate similar to like the way what WebScale and other, other uh, companies have figured out and uh, do it in a very optimal sense. Networks will have to kind of get there. So why open source? Um, promise of scale and resiliency. And uh, what, what it, uh, so when we look at uh, the, the pioneers in this area who have uh, you know, developed uh, white box solutions and uh, who figured out how to move traffic uh, between data centers, uh, we start seeing that you know, the networks are going to be in this manner. Uh, we are going to have a large number of data centers. We'll have to start moving traffic. Uh, we see how uh, the open source principles were uh, you know, implemented uh, by some of these uh, web scale providers. We see the same things can apply, and we can leverage some of those learning. The second key point is uh, you know, telco carriers typically followed standards. Um, but uh, standards bodies tend to be slow. It takes time. So what is happening now is that uh, being part of the open source communities, we're able to get like-minded people together, uh, you know, talk about things that make sense, uh, quickly put that into code, and then take a deployment. Uh, the time scale difference between uh, what you can do through a standards body versus what you can do through a, an open source community is, is you know, uh, hugely different. And so this becomes you know, extremely, extremely attractive. The, the, the other key point is uh, we see that in open communities are, are companies that have implemented uh, open source based uh, 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 solutions. Automation and others almost come in uh, both internally because there is, the, you know, there is a natural uh, development by the developers and others, but there's a lot of uh, community contribution towards uh, problems, you know, solving the problems. That is, an, again, attractive. I mean, today when we deploy uh, networks, you know, appliance-based networks, and rely on uh, one or two vendors, uh, a, a, a problem to a solution typically has to come from that one or two vendors. And, uh, and it takes time. Any kind of automation, any kind of uh, 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 optimization, others, we're still relying on those vendors. In this paradigm, uh, I think we see uh, the community behind us, and the community can actually help innovate faster. And finally, Dollars. I mean, there's definitely in open source the cost structures are are different uh, than than uh, you know what uh, what uh, we're used to. So it's it's an interesting uh, thing. So why are we not jumping in at uh, full speed? Uh, this this slide kind of uh, you know uh, reflects internal dilemmas that we go through, right? Um, there are multiple groups. In fact, we are going through these conversations now about OSM, ONAP, uh, who's behind it. Remember, we talked about that these are becoming pseudo standards group, groups, right? So if you can get uh, more people into one group, then you can actually influence the ecosystem and drive changes faster. Uh, but which ecosystem? So we're going through all these conversations. Uh, what, uh, what we need is we need to see more deployments. Um, we also need to see uh, more contribution from a wide variety of sources. We've had examples where uh, companies come and say, I've got this tool or I've got this software and it's open source. And look who's developing. There's like one company developing. You know, there's no, no contributors in that. Uh, th we're seeing a lot of that confusion, and, uh, and we've got we to gotta work, uh, uh, work uh, beyond that. Finally, uh, there's also. Disaggregation as a topic has been talked quite a bit in the last one and a half, two days. Open source is driven by disaggregation where each one of us can innovate in specific areas. But what that's driving is that we need to do a lot more integration than what we had done in the past. 
Uh, what they ask for vendors, uh, you know, our suppliers is, uh, what we see today is, uh, is you know, at the lowest level is OpenStack packaged uh, around uh, some of the proprietary functionality and given to us. And when I try to integrate that with somebody else's functionality, it gets extremely complicated. What we want, what we, what we, our ask for uh, vendor community is, you can innovate on your own applications and others, but make sure that the integration becomes open. You follow the standards, or you follow the community, you know, uh, uh, communities and and, uh, and open models and others, so that you know we can integrate much faster uh, across vendors, across uh, different uh, open source projects and others. And that needs to be the one uh, that needs to be solved. Uh, finally, our ask is harmonize the groups. There are a lot of uh, open source groups doing a lot of different things. Um, I don't think we're recommending that uh, uh, you know, it needs to be one open source uh, group or a project. But I think we need to have more dialogue between the teams, especially if you're all abstracting things quite a bit, then there has to be some level of uh, um, you know, integration level conversation that need to happen. Um, we need to move towards deployable solution. Uh, at the lower levels we are seeing, uh, OpenStack and others, carriers are deploying into the field and uh, uh, we can see scale, we can see uh, you know, massive volumes of data going through them, but as we slowly start moving upwards, uh, we, we, we haven't seen uh, uh, deployed solutions. Any, any questions? I know I have a minute. <laughs> 